So let's make hand sanitizer the right way. I'll show you how to make the World Health Organization's official hand sanitizer recipe, as well as a natural alternative. <laughs> okay, I couldn't resist. This is a natural DIY channel after all. Hi guys, and welcome to Whole Elise. I'm Elise, and if ever there was a time for a simple, easy to follow, effective DIY hand sanitizer, then this is probably it. With everything that's going on at the moment, I know it can be extremely tempting to crack open that first aid kit and start making your own hand sanitizer. But it is so important to make sure that not only does your hand sanitizer work, but that it's actually safe and not harmful to use. So in this video, I'll give you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make the hand sanitizer outlined in the World Health Organization's official guide, as well as a natural alternative made from simple ingredients that you can get from any pharmacy. But just before we get down to business, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I make natural DIYs on everything from skincare to household products and even tasty recipes. So definitely check out my channel and subscribe for weekly videos. Hand sanitizers generally fall between two categories, alcohol-based and non-alcohol sanitizers. Now there is evidence that both types work, but considering that alcohol-based sanitizers are used the most, they're recommended by the WHO, and we're currently amidst a coronavirus outbreak, um, now's not really the time to take risks, so I'm going to be focused on making alcohol-based hand sanitizers. Hand sanitizers require three basic ingredients, an alcohol, an emollient, and water. For hand sanitizers to be effective, they must have at least 60% alcohol content, and that's according to the US Center for Disease Control and Prevention. To make our hand sanitizer formula as accurate as possible, measure out each ingredient on a scale. The World Health Organization has two recipes using either ethanol or rubbing alcohol. I'll be using rubbing alcohol, but it needs to be at least 99.8% alcohol. Water is essential to hand sanitizers working. The water opens up bacterial pores, allowing the alcohol to infiltrate the bacterial cells and kill them. Next up is glycerol. Now glycerol and glycerin are similar, but glycerol is the pure form, whereas some forms of glycerin can be mixed with other ingredients. For the hydrogen peroxide, the World Health Organization states that it must be at 3% concentration. Hydrogen peroxide comes in various strengths, so make sure to use the right concentration and do not attempt to dilute it yourself. Now for the alcohol, you can either use ethanol or isopropyl, more commonly known as rubbing alcohol. Now I have seen some DIYs saying that you can use vodka as a replacement for rubbing alcohol. Vodka's alcohol content isn't nearly high enough to make an effective hand sanitizer. Because our final hand sanitizer needs to have at least 60% alcohol content, we need to start with pure alcohol because any additional ingredients that we add will dilute the mixture further. Because there's such a high alcohol content in hand sanitizers, that can actually be incredibly drying on your skin. So essentially, we use emollients to counter the drying effect of the alcohol to make sure that your skin is protected from damage. Glycerin is natural, easy to find, and very cheap, so I would recommend using that, but you can use any other emollient you like, as long as you make sure to include it in your hand sanitizer recipe. Pour the alcohol, water, glycerol and hydrogen peroxide into a jar and whisk until thoroughly combined. To make our hand sanitizer spray, you'll need a spray bottle. I recommend using one of these mini travel size bottles, they don't take up much space and they're perfect for whipping out and sanitizing on the go. Thank you. 
Now the World Health Organization's guide to making hand sanitizers actually includes hydrogen peroxide. But unlike the alcohol, emollient and water, hydrogen peroxide isn't actually essential to hand sanitizers working. It's likely that it's included because this guide is actually intended to be used in populations that don't have access to either clean water or medical grade products. So essentially the hydrogen peroxide acts as an extra precaution to stop any bacterial growth or contamination in the hand sanitizer as it's being made. For our natural DIY hand sanitizer, I'll still be using the World Health Organization's recipe as a base, but I'll be adding a few additional ingredients as well as tweaking the measurements to make it a little less harsh. And I'll also be taking out the hydrogen peroxide because, um, yeah. For our natural hand sanitizer, we still want to be as accurate as possible, so measure everything out on a scale. Instead of using rubbing alcohol, I'm using organic food grade ethanol at 96%. I'm adding a tad more water, but the main difference is the aloe vera gel. It's a great natural hydrator and soothes the skin, giving the hand sanitizer a silky feel. Glycerin's a little easier to find than glycerol, so I'm using that, but just make sure that it's 100% pure with nothing added to it. Like before, we'll pour everything into a container and then mix it together. The final addition to this natural hand sanitizer is to add a little fragrance. I'm using pure lavender essential oil that gives this sanitizer a calming effect while you're killing germs dead. Give it one final mix together and then pour it into your spray bottles. I'd recommend using a funnel for this unless you have unshakable confidence in your pouring capabilities. When used correctly, hand sanitizers effectively reduce and eliminate common germs, pathogens, as well as potentially harmful agents. When used correctly. <laughs> but unfortunately, most people don't actually use enough of it and they can actually wipe off a lot of the hand sanitizer before it even has a chance to dry. So the way that you apply your hand sanitizer is incredibly important. When applying hand sanitizer, the general rule of thumb is more is more. Seriously, apply a generous amount to one hand and then rub your two hands together until your hands are completely dry. To hammer this point home, I'm going to show you this in real time. Yeah, um, this takes a while. we're done. The purpose of hand sanitizer is to kill germs, not erase dirt. Hand sanitizers don't actually clean your hands. So if your hands are visibly dirty or greasy, it is still far more effective to wash your hands with soap and water first. And then if you feel it's necessary, you can then use hand sanitizer. Cleaning your hands with soap and water is still the most effective way to avoid getting sick and potentially spreading germs to others. But when you don't have access to soap and water, hand sanitizers are extremely convenient and effective in providing you with protection on the go. Hopefully being able to make your own hand sanitizer, especially when there are reported shortages, will give you some peace of mind. Please do share this video and give it a thumbs up if you found it helpful. And subscribe to my channel for even more natural DIYs, tutorials and recipes. Thanks for watching. In case you're interested, I've linked the WHO's guide to hand sanitizer below. And while you're there, why not check out a few of my videos?